Thank you. Senator Waters. Thanks very much, Mr Acting Deputy President. And I rise to speak with the most vehemence possible in opposition to this ridiculous bill. Um, surprise, surprise, Tony Abbott wants to trash the environment and make it even easier for the big miners and big developers to trash the place. Well, he's gone too far, far too far. We've had 30 years now of gradually the Commonwealth government stepping up to take on more responsibility for the environment. And it's been through international developments with things like the World Heritage Convention, the Biodiversity Convention, the, the Ramsar Wetlands Convention. Of course, that famous High Court case of 30 years ago where the federal government stepped in and said, no, you can't damn the Franklin. This is of World Heritage significance. That was when we established the principle that the federal government had a role to play in protecting the environment. Up until then, it had basically been up to the states. Well, thank goodness that that decision was taken because prior to that and in the intervening 30 years, we've seen continued poor decision-making by state governments right across the country, continually putting the interests of um, short-term private profits and promises of jobs that rarely eventuate, I might add, ahead of protecting the environment, ahead of clean water, clean air um, and a sustainable uh, future for all of us. We've had that for 30 years now. The, the Commonwealth stepping in only for the worst of the worst projects, only when there's likely to be a significant impact, a very high threshold, on a matter of national environmental significance. So already it's just a sliver of the thousands of proposals that go ahead every year. The Commonwealth only ever looks at the worst of the worst, and it's been able to stop some of those most damaging projects. Uh, what we saw a couple of years ago, to my great disappointment, was a proposal by the then Gillard government to give away those approval powers that the Commonwealth had fought so hard to win over 30 years to state governments, who have a terrible track record of, as I say, letting anything go um, and letting those private interests trump the public interest of a healthy environment. Now, with concerted uh, community and environment sector campaigning um, and with some internal advice that revealed what an absolute dog's breakfast that plan would turn out to be, thankfully the Gillard government resiled from that uh, proposal to hand off powers. And we are absolutely thrilled that the Labor Party has now changed that view and has now today and, and uh, in recent months confirmed that they agree the federal government should keep what limited environment powers it has to try and protect things like world heritage and species that are nationally threatened uh, and internationally significant wetlands. We really welcome that and we thank them for that. What I am particularly concerned about is the Abbott government's uh, plans, not just to give away approval powers as the previous government planned, but with this bill today to make that go even further. Nothing is sacred with this bill. The water trigger is on the chopping block. Now, people might recall in the last parliament, the Greens, the Independents, um, and the, the then Labor government uh, finally came to an agreement whereby the federal government would actually start protecting water federally from things like large coal mines and coal seam gas. And we know the huge damage that can be done to aquifers when you punch a hole through it to try and get to some coal seam gas. We know the contamination risk that's very real, um, both from those uh, fracking fluids um, and from uh, naturally mo uh, mobilising naturally occurring carcinogens in the geology. And we know the potential for the groundwater table to drop once you start messing with that pressure. So we know the need for the water trigger. I was so pleased um, when Tony Windsor agreed with the Greens that we needed to keep that power in federal hands. And so that's why this Abbott government needs this bill, because they want to give that away as well as everything else. Well, over our dead bodies is what we say today. But it doesn't stop there. This bill uh, is completely unbelievable in its appallingness. This bill says it's not just the state governments that should, have a, that, that should take over national environment decision-making powers, that it's OK for local councils to do that as well. Look, I'm a huge fan of local councils, and I think in the main they do an excellent job within their jurisdiction. But to give them control over the management of world heritage areas, over the management of internationally significant wetlands, they do not have the expertise for that, and they do not have the personnel to properly perform that role. 
So this, that particular part of this bill is an absolute outrage. Now, the third and sneakiest part of this bill is the fact that federal standards, which this government has crowed about and has said, oh, it doesn't really matter who's in charge, it'll be the same standards being applied by you know, the faceless men making these decisions. Well, the, uh, one of the amendments in this bill says that those very standards actually don't have to be reflected in state laws and therefore can be ignored. It makes an absolute farce of the claims that federal standards would ever be adhered to. If it's not in the state law, of course they're not going to be adhered to. Where's the obligation to adhere to them? So the very absence of logic uh, in, with this government's rhetoric boggles the mind. They are the three key um, awful parts that this bill would facilitate. But of course there's two stages to this process. The actual handoff of powers happens by agreement between the Commonwealth and the states because John Howard put that provision into these laws when they first passed 14 years ago. So there are these deals already being done with the states to give away federal environment powers. The Greens intend to block those as well when they come to this chamber. And I hope that we will have the support um, of other parties to do that as well. We need to stop both this bill and those bilateral agreements to make sure that the Commonwealth can still look after things like world heritage, like the Great Barrier Reef, uh, like water when it stands to be affected by coal and coal seam gas. Now, the government's gone to great pains to claim that there'll be all sorts of safeguards and that, you know, that nothing bad's going to happen. As I say, it doesn't matter who's making the decision. It's irrelevant. Well, there are so many reasons why that is wrong, and I'll touch on, um, on some of those today. Uh, I've already mentioned the fact that those standards won't now need to be reflected in state law with this bill to pass, so that makes a mockery of the claim that the standards would be upheld. We know that the states simply aren't going to act in the national interest. That's not their job. Why would they? They're state governments. They're meant to act in their state's interest. They are not going to, nor are they obliged to act in the national interest. Uh, my concern is also when uh, many of the proponents for the most damaging developments, um, be they large infrastructure projects, ports and the like, are state governments. So you will have the fox in charge of the hen house if this government's proposal goes through. What an absolute conflict of interest and how, how they can't see that flagrant conflict of interest and how they can live with not putting any parameters on managing it um, is beyond me. So we know that the standards will fall when the decision maker changes. We know that there will be these huge conflicts of interest that are not able to be managed. Um, we know that those standards won't be reflected in law. And we know that the state laws are already atrocious when it comes to looking after the environment. There's been countless um, legal analyses of them. No state or territory in the whole country currently meets the standard that the federal environmental laws do. They are just not strong enough. So the notion that you could somehow give them more powers and that miraculously they'll start caring about the environment is truly ridiculous. We know that they're not up to the job. We know that there's been many staff sackings, not just federally, but also at the state level. In my home state of Queensland, um, Campbell Newman has been on an absolute rampage to sack almost 14,000 public servants um, and a large proportion of those from our environment departments. We know that there's been 220 staff sacked from the environment department. Now, where are the personnel to take on this additional federal responsibility? They're not there. They've been sacked or pressured to, to take a voluntary redundancy. There are not the people to do this work. There is not the legislative safeguard that the same sort of decision would be made. And there is no guarding against this massive conflict of interest of states ticking off on their own projects. Um, now, the government might say, oh, that's fine. We've, we've got this great call-in power in our draft agreements with the states. Well, I've had a very close look at that, and it won't work. There's a highly prescribed test for when the Commonwealth Minister can miraculously have a state of mind where he or she knows that something is fishy is going on at the state level and can call that back in, but it's got to be before the state has already issued the approval. Well, how are they going to know that something fishy is going on when they are moving on the staff from their own assessment department and when it's in the state government's interest to not tell people that they're dodgy? I mean, hello, how could that test ever work? The state governments are not going to dob themselves in 
and so the federal minister will never know in a timely enough manner to step in in the time frame that this so-called safeguard provides. So it, it's a complete farce that the Commonwealth already has a tiny shred of environmental responsibility, and this safeguard, which frankly is, reads like it's written to fail, um, would not provide any protection at all. Now, um, in Queensland, uh, in the short time that we've had Campbell Newman as our premier, he has set about attacking the environment like there's no tomorrow. Perhaps he's intending on there being no tomorrow. But I have um, a list of more than 30 changes, be they repeals, be they watering downs, um, be they abolitions. And I, and I know the support from Senator Macdonald for such an anti-environment agenda, um, as if we needed any confirmation of that. But thanks anyway, Senator Macdonald. Um, so I'll just catalogue some of those. So in those two years, more than 30 changes to our environmental laws in Queensland. Um, of course, the Great Barrier Reef, very close to my heart and on the radar of the World Heritage Committee for a possible listing of World Heritage Site in danger if we continue to trash it with mass dredging and dumping and new and expanded ports for fossil fuel export, which of course will damage the reef by way of climate change impacts. When asked about all of those concerns and the international shame that the Newman and Abbott governments are bringing to Australia based on how we treat our reef, Campbell Newman says, we're in the coal business. That's his response to concerns about the future of the Great Barrier Reef, the 69,000 people who rely on it staying healthy and being on the World Heritage List for their job, and the $6 billion that reef tourism brings in every year. We're in the coal business, says our Premier. Well, apparently we're also in the uranium business because Campbell Newman has lifted the ban on uranium mining in Queensland. Um, also on mines, he's allowing the release of legacy mine water not just a pilot program, but he's now locked that in and extended that out. So we're now treating the reef like a toilet bowl from uh, dirty mine water that's polluted with all sorts of heavy metals and other toxins. Um, the, shale, the shale oil mining ban, that's been lifted as well, thanks to Campbell Newman. Um, and of course, your right as a member of the public to object to mines that you are concerned about for whatever reason, be that your own private interest, be that environmental concerns, that's been removed as well. Campbell Newman is shutting down community input into that process. Of course, the Stradbroke Island mining, very controversial. He got a rather large in-kind contribution from a Belgian mining company in the course of his election campaign on the public record. Sabelco um, helped him out to the tune of about $90,000. What do you know? Once he assumes the premiership, he then retrospectively reinstates their expired mining lease. If that's not corruption, I don't know what is. The list of changes go on. Of course, he's defunded the Environmental Defender's Office because, hey, they actually care what the law says and want people to be able to enforce it, so they must be silenced. Disbanded the Office of Climate Change. Cut the solar feed-in tariff. Um, junked, the, junked the support for the Solar Dawn project. I've already mentioned the job cuts. Oh, Cancelled our state planning policies, um, particularly the coastal state planning policy, which might have actually helped the Great Barrier Reef. Um, it's made it more expensive for community groups to challenge poor and unlawful decisions in the courts. Released a port strategy that is a glossy version of business as usual. Uh, national parks are fine for cows to go in there, fine for hotels to be built in national parks now. Um, uh, vegetation management watered down our, our protection for vegetation. Oh, the waste management levy, well, that's been scrapped. So, well, fancy that. Other states are now dumping their waste in our state because it's cheaper for them to do so, as if we're somehow the rubbish tip of Australia. Wild rivers, protection for our pristine and, and free-flowing rivers, gone, abolished. That was about two weeks ago. Um, and the list does go on. Campbell Newman is an absolute disaster for Queensland and particularly a disaster for Queensland's environment. Um, we've heard how he has taken money in, I believe, a corrupt manner. Um, prior to the election and then granted a particular favour for that Belgian mining company. We know his views on the Great Barrier Reef. And um, Just last week, he backflipped on a clear commitment to Excuse the World me, Heritage Senator Committee. Waters. Premier Campbell Newman, if that's the point Excuse of order. Excuse me, Senator Waters. Senator Sullivan. Point of order, uh, Mr President. There are provisions in our standing orders uh, that speak to members of one parliament making these assertions against the members of another parliament. And I'd ask uh, uh, that the clerk give advice in relation uh, to 
what is a very, very serious allegation against the Premier of the State of Queensland. Sure is. I didn't hear the allegations that Senator Waters might have been making, but if Senator Waters is making inappropriate allegations, then uh, I encourage her to withdraw them. But uh, Senator Waters, Senator Peravanti Wells. On the point of order, I heard um, Senator Waters uh, uh, distinctly make reference to uh, guilty of corruption. So I think on that basis, I would also invite Senator Waters to withdraw her comments. Thank you, Senator Peravanti Wells. Senator Waters. Thanks, Deputy President. Um, in relation to the direct assertion that Campbell Newman, Premier Campbell Newman is corrupt, I withdraw that direct assertion, but I do note that the inference remains when you take money and then retrospectively validate an expired mining lease, it is open to conclude that that in, is in fact what's happened. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, well, no. Senator Macdonald. It's even a greater uh, crime on behalf of the senator to say that Campbell Newman, I assume personally, took money. That is an outrageous slur. Not only is it an outrageous slur, but it's entirely incorrect, and it, it doesn't behove the reputation of the Senate for senators to be making those sort of un unwarranted and order, unsubstantiated order. Uh, allegations. And I don't know whether Premier Campbell Newman would be similarly offended by that statement. I believe that he did receive about $90,000 of in-kind support from Sabelco, a Belgian mining company. Perhaps Senator Macdonald might like to take that up in his party room. Uh, and Senator, I might continue if Senator I may. Senator Sullivan. Did this, th these, in, in her efforts to qualify her statements, uh, they are becoming more damaging. More damaging. And, and I well well uh, I, I asked uh, that I mean this is outrageous. No 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 just to, Senator I, Sullivan. I make the point that this the point these allegations need to be withdrawn in the spirit of the standing orders which indicate that we oughtn't make these allegations against members of another parliament. Thank you. Um, I note that Senator Waters has withdrawn the allegation. Senator Macdonald. Well, Mr. Acting Deputy President, either on Senator O'Sullivan's point of order or on a new one, but what, what is in, the point in withdrawing of order? them, uh, Senator, Senator Walters actually alleges that Mr. Newman, I assume personally, received ninety thousand dollars from a Belgian mining company. Now that is grossly offensive, grossly against standing orders, and uh, as, uh, just by the way, it's completely untrue and unfactual. And I've already responded to that exactly the same point of order that Senator Macdonald raised last time by clarifying that I did not assert that he'd received the money personally, but that he'd received in-kind support to the extent of $90,000. I think that's perfectly order, clear. Now, Senator Waters, would you please continue with your Thank contribution? Thank you. Uh, with, with great pleasure. Um, now, as I was saying, the, uh, the record of the excuse new— Excuse me, Senator uh, Waters. Senator Ferry Vanty wells uh, Mr. Acting Deputy President, I'm concerned about this exchange, uh, and, uh, and the point of order is I would appreciate if the matter could be um, reviewed, and perhaps uh, Senator Walters uh, reflect on precisely what it is that she said, uh, and that the matter could be um, considered, uh, Mr. Acting Deputy President, and potentially uh, reviewed uh, by um, by you uh, and by uh, the President, because I am concerned that some of these matters remain on the record and ought have not properly and fully been withdrawn. I'll report back to the president if he has anything further to add. He'll add it. Thank you. Senator Waters. Thanks, Deputy President. Um, now, as I was saying, the, the terrible record of the Newman government on environmental issues and, frankly, many other civil liberties issues, um, the list could go on in relation to the Newman's agenda, the Newman government's agenda in the last two years leads us to the inescapable conclusion that these are the last people that you would put in charge of internationally significant environmental icons that are not only beautiful, bring many, many tourists to our shores and make our hearts sing, but actually bring in an awful lot of um, economic uh, support for our, for our economy in Queensland. As I say, $6 billion for reef tourism every year. Um, so this is why, for the last two years, we have been opposing the plan to put the state governments in charge of what is a national responsibility. They have demonstrated time and time again uh, that they are not up to the job of protecting the environment. 
and why should they be responsible for carrying out international obligations? That's the national government's role. Um, so we will be opposing this bill um, in absolutely in every in every part, and we've been holding discussions for the better part of those two years, and obviously particularly in earnest in recent weeks with the crossbenchers about the need for them um, to vote to retain the federal government's ability to protect these beautiful and significant environmental icons. Now, there's been quite a lot of talk about well whether we should just keep the water trigger. Now, of course, the water trigger is very close to our hearts, being um, part of the, the engineering that resulted in that uh, getting onto our law books. But it's not just water that's important. World heritage is important. The Great Barrier Reef is important. Internationally significant wetlands are important. Uh, in, uh, nationally threatened species are important. We have these federal environmental laws because these things matter and they're too precious to lose to the wanton neglect and greed of state premiers. Now, when it comes to the vote, I hope that um, the crossbenchers bear that in mind and that we are able to keep all of our federal environment powers and not just the water trigger. Um, as I say, it's, it's no surprise that we see this sort of nonsense from the Abbott government. In their short time in government, I've got a list of about 18 changes, um, and even that's already out of date, where they have wound back national environment protections. Um, this one-stop shop has been the grossest one, in my view. Uh, but getting rid of our science and climate change ministers, maybe not such a great idea when we're facing a climate crisis. Of course, defunding the EDO on top of those Queensland um, cuts, so the poor Queensland EDOs now have no public funding at all for the first time in more than 25 years. Of course, abolishing our carbon price to the great shame of um, future generations, abolishing the Climate Commission, trying to get rid of CEFC in ARENA, approving the world's largest coal port in the Great Barrier Reef. That's on this government's hands as well. Um, cutting the reef rescue funding and setting up some dodgy offsets fund instead of um, actually supporting a current scheme that was working. Abolishing the Water Commission, trying to delist the Tassie Forest World Heritage listing. Um, considering that we've got too much forest locked up in national parks and saying that, well, um, the foresters are really the true conservationists. Uh, that was, if it wasn't so alarming, it would be incredibly amusing. Trying to get rid of our, our world-leading um, marine national parks. Ticking off on all of these Galilee mega mines that will single-handedly uh, contribute enormously to worsening climate change um, and for what? To make a few people a bit richer. That's not a good deal in my view. Um, continuing to deny landholders the right to say no to risky coal seam gas and other unconventional gas on their land. Seriously, why should these people bear the risk and why should we trash our aquifers and our groundwater, the most precious resource we've got in the driest inhabited continent on the planet? For the sake of a few multinationals' bottom line, again, not a good deal for Australia. Um, they're continuing attempts to try and repeal the mining tax, of course, abolishing the biodiversity fund, um, putting a, a go slow on the Cape York World Heritage nomination against the wishes of many of those traditional owners, um, and cutting land care funding. Uh, this government is just set on destroying the environment, and this bill today is the latest instalment. I think it's one of the worst because it winds back 30 years of protection for the national environment, where we say the states are not there to do the job of the national government. They shouldn't have to care about international obligations. That is the national government's job to do that. And where we say that actually icons like the Great Barrier Reef uh, and internationally significant wetlands and species and water are too important to be simply washed your hands of because you can't be bothered having those responsibilities anymore. I hope today we will see a vote that sees this bill consigned to the dustbin of history permanently. Thank you.